Hi, this is Jeff Kober, and we are here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. We're long overdue for an update, and we thought we'd come here and bring you uh, the magic of nature, as it is just a beautiful day, kind of warm, but, uh, but not hot and humid like it is in the summer. It's just that trans, that moment where, where the season is kind of chilling in, and, uh, and we're here to enjoy the park and to uh, check out what's happening, what's new, check out a few things that I really love and adore. Today we want to share with you some of my favorite hot spots. Well, actually they're cool spots. We're just chilling out and enjoying the scenery and just being in the moment at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And it actually begins even before you get in the park. Here's a great little place off to the side at the Rainforest Cafe. If you're having to wait for guests to arrive before you enter the park, this is a great little space because there's plenty of shade, plenty of benches, plenty of spaces. You could just chill out and enjoy beautiful rock work, beautiful landscaping. It just gets you in the mood for your day at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And, uh, and that's what it's all about. So let's head in the park and experience some of these great places as well as new things that are happening in the park. How can you not love this park when you enter in it? It's so unlike any theme park because it's really just one beautiful oasis of nature, of animals, of water. It's just a beautiful place and we're here to check out that if you're going to chill out at Disney's Animal Kingdom, you're invited to do it right as you enter the park. Looking through this exhibit, it's pretty hard to see its a primary citizen here is the wallaby. A lot of people think, well, how come Australia isn't represented in the Disney theme parks? Well, I think it should be in a greater way, but still, when you go through Disney's Animal Kingdom, you'll find wallabies at the Oasis and kangaroos on Discovery Island. Here is one of my favorite chill places in all of Oasis. It's the bridge that connects us through a little cave that leads us into the discovery of Discovery Island. You see this just this grotto area is so beautiful. Take a look back through there, you see an outcropping of kind of a, an, an opening in the cave wall with some what looks like logs kind of in the middle of it, but that's a secret way to look into Oasis from uh, from uh, the Discovery Island. Here we are on the other side, taking a little bit of a peek inside the whole cave area that leads to Discovery Island. And I'll show you that same that same little section, and it's quite low here at um, the Cape Fortune. It's almost like a discovery point for children, because an adult could easily pass by and not even see this little this little opening uh, towards Oasis. But it's a it's a very cool little piece that is part of it. Here's another little opening that's a little bit more obvious to guess as they come through. And the waterfall comes on the other side, and then of course as you turn around and head into Discovery Island, you see the great tree of life. And it's just, it just unfolds itself after having been in those tight little sections of Oasis to see the entire park just come alive in the centerpiece of, uh, of nature. Here's a really good view of the four otters that are somewhat playing around. And uh, they're in the middle of the island, just kind of doing their thing, hanging out and then chilling out like everyone should when they visit Disney's Animal Kingdom. A little known discovery trail. And if you keep your eyes open, this is a great place to see the kangaroos hanging out. I see three right there just uh, chilling out in the middle of the day and uh, doing their own thing. And it's all right here and uh, underneath the beautiful uh, tree of life. It's just a really great little trail to discover. This is really one of the closest places to get to the Tree of Life and just to really embrace all of the animal sculpture. As you see a rhinoceros in the foreground. Over here, beautiful waterfall that's coming in the front. That's the one you see when you enter Discovery Island and you can walk right behind it. Yes, you can see the backside of water when you are on Discovery Island and visiting the Tree of Life. We are crossing through Discovery Island past uh, the barbecue place and it smells so good. We're heading over to Dinoland 
Hard to leave that barbecue. We'll have to come back to it when we get a chance. But we're gonna enjoy all things dino. Check it out. Okay, I have to tell you, this little outlet, Trilo Bites, is um, got buffalo chicken chips, and it is one of the most decadent things you can eat. Make sure you share that snack. And looks like signs of Donald's Dino Bash is still around, which is uh, wonderful because it was a really great character meet and greet. Problem is there are no character meet and greets right now. So kind of confusing the expectation that the bunting and banners are setting. We'll, uh, we'll move toward the right. I was gonna show you one of the little side trails that I really love when I'm at Dinoland, but that has been used up for this standby line, which uh, continues on through into the entrance of Dinoland, and then on into the attraction itself. It's a 70 minute standby line right now for a uh, dinosaur. So um, not the best time of day to go visit this particular attraction. A lot of guests like to chill in this little space over here at the exit of Dinosaur. And I just love this little pathway that leads to what is probably one of the most crazy gift shops ever created. But I really, I'm not a big fan of Chester and Hester's Dinorama, but I do love the gift shop. And I love to see all the, uh, all the crazy theming that has gone into this uh, dino store. Um, it's just, a, again, this is just over here, the little picnic table, great place to just take a break and, um, and chill out. And, uh, and then let those who wanna shop come in and do so because there's so many crazy things. The tr uh, train that is usually ran through here uh, at the top of, I mean, just looking up all of the different um, dino toys and pieces of homage to, to our love of dinosaurs and all things Cretaceous. It's just, uh, it's just one of these very uniquely designed gift shops and, uh, and very reminiscent, especially for someone who um, grew up in Arizona and when you get out into the open road, you see these kinds of areas out of nowhere. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. I love this uh, little area over here with the old fashioned uh, phone. I wonder if that, uh, yeah, that's how I've been glued um, to the phone the piece, but it uh, even has little notes here. Dino Dan's Dino Repair, here's a phone number. Keith's fossil uh, prices, lowest <laughs> in the area. It's just there are lots of little fun things that make all of this uh, really come together. Now the sad news is, is you step out and you get to the primeval world. That has been declared as closed permanently. Uh, no loss in my mind for closing it because honestly, um, I thought it was about the ugliest thing on earth. Uh, made uglier by the fact that it's full of asphalt all around it. Who ever thought this was an attractive attraction or attractive idea? It came during and post 9-11 when Disney didn't have a lot of money, but they were trying to create ways to get people to come to the parks. And they thought this, uh, this uh, little... Um, uh, roller coaster done twice because there are two two tr sets of tracks might uh, attract a lot of guests. Um, there has been a lot of safety issues, um, cast members injured and even killed by this attraction because it's just uh, a very confusing place to as to where to step and and be in when you're trying to uh, to. Uh, operate the attraction or trying to operate after hours and um, do clean up and other kinds of things in the attractions. Um, so it's just welcome this being completely 
remodeled sooner than later and made into something else because the other half of Dino Land with Restaurantosaurus and the Dino Right, you know, those are actually good pieces. It just needs to have this area completely revised. And by the way, one of the things that has happened is that they did open uh, a couple of the, um, uh, the games. Um, Bronto Score is open, which is a sort of a basketball uh, throw experience for uh, some plush. And then over here, you have um, what is called Comet Crasher, where you are able to uh, throw balls into, um, into holes. And if you get them into holes, then you get some plush out of it. But most of actually, most of the games are actually closed and uh, there's not a lot going on here. And uh, it looks a little more lively than it did when it first opened in July, but not by much. Not sure what to do with this huge, huge dinosaur that uh, sits here, but there could be some great reimagining to this entire area. If people could get a little creative with it. One of the really cool places to take a break is here in the former stadium of the nighttime show. Uh, that show has ended formally, it's not coming back. But during the day or during park hours, they allow you to just come here, take your face covering off and just enjoy a moment. In the sun or in the shade, doesn't matter, it's just wonderful and with a cool breeze hope it's not ruining the audio on this recording but I have to tell you it's long overdue having some some nice little breeze and by the way you get to see a little bit of entertainment come by when you're here Mickey and his pals returning from their safari adventure down here's the Mickey Skyway. Minnie and Pluto coming on down the river and uh, just greeting guests as they uh, float along and uh, it's a nice little uh, character cavalcade that's unique to Disney Animal Kingdom in that it, uh, it's just on the river. It's not uh, one of these little um, vehicles or floats, but rather it's just a nice little boat. We actually have a link to a complete character cavalcade of all four parks. You can check out in our notes page, so don't miss that at uh, Disney at Play. So we're here at two attractions that are currently not open. The first is the Theater in the Wild, which showcases Disney Pixar's Finding Nemo the Musical, a brilliant show, beautiful show, makes me cry every time at the end. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, those performances have not continued. And it's just a heartbreak because it really is one of the best shows. In fact, I would say between it and Festival of the Lion King, it's the reason my youngest son has chosen not to come back to the Disney parks. He wants to see the shows and he loves them and they are a part. Uh, thank you to those that cast. I hope they are making it through. The other attraction to mention is, uh, is Expedition Everest, which has been open since, uh, since the park uh, began back in July. But uh, unfortunately, is not open today. In fact, what I thought was an interesting when I came into the park is that I received a message on my phone telling me that Expedition Everest was not open. And uh, sounds like a bigger thing than just like it's down for the next 20 minutes. It looks like it is not available the entire day. There are no crowds in this corner of the park. It's pretty empty uh, because it is not open. And uh, it's a really disappointing thing. So, um, yeah, so that's a big guest dissatisfier. By the way, that note was signed by Dewan Rivers, who's the vice president in charge of this particular park. So you know that this was a well thought out, not just a temporary message, but a message saying, uh, hey, uh, we're really sorry that this is not operating at this time such a beautiful attraction, such an amazing thrill ride. I just asked a cast member and they said that they have been down since uh, the park opening this morning. They have no idea when it'll open. It's now um, early in the afternoon. We're here at the entrance 
to the attraction. Pretty, pretty quiet, pretty closed. I have to say the details in the queue, it is almost worth being in the standby queue because there are so many amazing details that flow throughout this entire uh, attraction. I certainly make it really worth visiting. Over here we have uh, Thirsty River Bar, which used to be, do you remember? This used to be where you got your fast passes from. It's now a snack place and uh, looking pretty settled here. Here's something to notice. We're here at Anandapur local food cafes. This has largely been kind of um, um, Asian inspired food, rice and orange chicken, that kind of thing. And they still have the egg rolls, I believe, but they've gone to chicken sandwiches and hamburgers. Mobile ordering we talk about to no end because it just saves you time in line. You'll notice that there is a line to one of three registers and each register is only single sided. You see that line continues well past the cafe. Why is it extending this far? Because Anandapur is operated by the same folks who operate Yak and Yeti. And the reality of it is, is they are not under the mobile ordering system. So this counter service uh, opportunity requires a, a huge wait. And meanwhile, the only three um, venues that offer mobile ordering right now, the barbecue restaurant, um, the um, uh, Satuli Canteen, and um, what is this? Oh, Restaurantosaurus. Those restaurants right now, it's 1245 in the afternoon, and those restaurants, you have to wait 45 minutes from the time you order before you could come back to say, I'm ready to get, which may still be another uh, 20, 30 minutes before you get your food. So if you're coming here, make sure you take the time to order your food in advance so that when you're ready to order, you're, you're good to go. And by the way, I have to tell you, Yak and Yeti, one of my favorite restaurants in Walt Disney World. I love the cuisine there. It's a delightful experience. And um, I would definitely make a reservation for that restaurant if you get a chance. We're coming over to the uh, Up Bird Show, which has been uh, dramatically modified in recent uh, months as the park has reopened. Over here is a break area where guests can uh, take their face covering off. I have to show you these little guys. Do they look a little familiar? These uh, little stones in this Asian garden under this big banyan tree uh, seem a little familiar to uh, Monsters Incorporated Laugh Floor. And I think it's a great little, little piece that most people go by and never see. Another little great piece to see is this statue of our favorite characters from Up. And uh, you see, uh, see both of them, and, uh, and they're pretty clever and cute uh, to this setting. So, one of my favorite respites in the entire park is along this road that connects you between Asia and Africa. There's a side trail. And for a long time, it was uh, made into a smoking area which did not make me a very happy camper. You see there's some tables and canopy area covering, but uh, even if you don't need a, if, if you're not sitting, just just taking a look at the fountains, you can hear the waterfalls uh, as it kind of goes down a little brook along this area and then heads into uh, the Discovery River. This is just one of my favorite little corners of the park to just take a break lots of shade lots of lots of beauty to enjoy a great place to take photos and just beyond the river you see the tree of life um, extending beyond we're heading into the streets of africa to a food and beverage area that uh, the rombe market which opened a couple of years ago. You see some folks dining out here, but what you don't see when you enter this marketplace are any of the outlets open. 
if you recall when it opened, they actually had not one, not two, but three different little places, kind of like um, a little food market, and you could go check out different choices that they had available here. For instance, they had a ribs bowl. Well, this one was all about bowls. Uh, beef and lamb um, uh, hero that I especially loved. Uh, the most beautiful cake, which um, was a coconut cake topped with creamy coconut mousse filled with tangy pineapple center and accompanied by coconut crisps. Over here at the uh, Chef Mwanga's meat shop, you had, um, again, kind of the same menu listed here, but at one point, this was three different sets of menus. Uh, if you recall earlier, this area, and I probably could show a picture of it on the notes page, this area had a bunch of cluttered um, uh, junk all gathered. It was thematically done, but it was all kind of cluttered there. Now it is a fenced area that overlooks the train when it comes through. So it's a nice little touch there. Again, this is a very nice little corner to gather. It's just a unfortunate when there are lines over there in Asia for food, that there isn't a food and beverage option available here right now. The queue for Kilimanjaro safaris is right now showing at 35 minutes, but look at the standby line. It is going way past the entrance to the Tusker house. But also notice that most of these guests, uh, the line for the most part keeps moving. There is a flow to it, so it's not doing too badly. I'd uh, like to get back over here and do Kilimanjaro safaris before we end the day. We'll have to see. Tamu Tamu, Tamu Refreshments has uh, got a nice little queue with it. This is your place for Dole Whip. There are also some Halloween specialties, but other than the uh, Halloween straw, I don't see anything listed right now here. Meanwhile, across the way, Dawa Bar has recently reopened and it's got a little queue too. And uh, guests are just chilling out in the shade here of this outdoor patio. The bridge is always a great place to catch the entertainment and it goes by. We're here at the bridge on Africa and you see the band floating on by. And here, you can step over to the other side and see it come out on the other side of the bridge as it plays out. Again, it'll circle along the Discovery River all the way around Discovery Island. in their job. They are moving. Yeah. Great little group. And, uh, and it adds a, a great sense of festivity to the area. Makes it feel like your things are alive and happening here in Africa. All right, I found the end of the queue for Kilimanjaro safaris. This is what social distancing will do for you. We're on the back side of the Tusker house not far from the exit where guests leave Festival of the Lion King. There's a little shaded patio area and you can see on the ground, there are stripes. They have anticipated long queues lining up and it's only 35 minutes right now. Now in a regular guest day, you would not expect, you would not expect a queue to be this long for 35 minutes. 35 minutes, they don't even use the internal extended queues. That's not very long, but with social distancing, they have to move these queues further back. And you see the cast member holding up the sign saying line starts here. And uh, but here, this is another really great little corner of the park to just take a break, chill and uh, and just feel the breeze passing through. Seconds ago, I mentioned how the Kilimanjaro Safari queue was extending all the way to the exit of Festival of the Lion King. We'll go to the other side of the building toward the entrance of the Festival of the Lion King. And that's where you see the beginning of the queue for Flight of Passage. Yes, it's that long. It's that long because, well, again, you have to socially distance. And mind you, the parking lot is not that full outside. So the park is not as busy as it may seem. It's just that the traffic is spread considerably um, in the location it's at. By the way, that isn't actually the end of the queue at Festival of the Lion King. It's actually backing up over here. 
Before we leave this area, I just want to point out this new building, Harambe House, which is the Club 33 location for guests staying, uh, visiting the property, and uh, has recently opened to guests. Again, uh, you join the flight of passage queue in Pandora, then you walk it back all the way to the Festival of Lion King before and then turn around and come back into Pandora. So here we are at what is the formal entrance to Flight of Passage with a stated wait time of 105 minutes. Um, I would tell guests who were coming here for the first time that was worth it. Remember that the queue uh, length was much longer in the early days when the attraction first opened. It easily exceeded came up to 180 minutes, 185, even beyond 200 on occasion. So um, as crazy as long as this queue is, the reality of it is, is, and I'm not even sure where it's bending to here before it comes back into the queue. It's, it just keeps going. But the fact of the matter is, is with this uh, social distancing, queues look really long. And by the way, remember that with the, uh, uh, Expedition Everest opening, the, this line would have probably easily been 85 minutes, 75 minutes if the attraction was just, um, if Expedition Everest was available to uh, take guests as well during this time. Just as a contrast, we're here at Satuli Canteen, very popular dining location, lots of guests standing around or sitting around waiting for their mobile order to be available so they can enter into the restaurant. Meanwhile, here at Pangu Pangu, there is actually a line because there is no mobile ordering. Why there isn't, I don't know, because you could do it for uh, Aloha Isle or uh, the Dole Shop at uh, Magic Kingdom. Why not do it here? But again, lots of crowds in this area, but not... Uh, not a long line like you see in a as a contrast to that huge 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 long line for flight of passage and the chaos of satuli canteen here i am just just a few feet away from that in a very quiet little corner of pandora where i could just sit back and enjoy the fountains and or the falls enjoy the beautiful rock work and landscaping and just almost escape all of the craziness of the park in this very quiet moment. So if you just know where to look, you can find some really great places to enjoy the park and just experience all of its beauty. We're here in the beauty of Flame Tree Barbecue. I have two favorite counter service restaurants, Satuli Canteen, when you are seeking respite from the hot, muggy summer heat, the rain, perfect to go indoors, great food. But the winter months out here, Flame Tree Barbecue, it's just impressive. It's beautiful, it's shady, there's a breeze, there's, there's water flowing through. It's just amazing how many places throughout Disney's Animal Kingdom you find the water is flowing from somewhere behind you. It's a great place to grab, and there's some great food. Besides the barbecue, I love the salad that they offer at uh, Flame Tree Barbecue. It's got kind of a barbecue dressing, as well as these um, cornbread croutons kind of uh, with it. It's just a and chicken. It's just a great salad to enjoy and, uh, and, and a great setting to enjoy it in. And the backdrop of Expedition Everest Kill, um, it's just... It's just a beautiful area. Of course, you have a lot of birds coming through here, all hungry as well. But um, <clears throat> it's a wonderful setting, and it's one of the great places I love to be at. By the way, it is also the location of a fantastic cupcake that is part of the Halloween experience uh, here. This year, Disney is trying to celebrate Halloween in all of its parks, and uh, the one place where you can get it here is a flame tree barbecue on my on my list 
of foods and beverages to try out during the Halloween season. I give everything between one and three stars. This one gets 10 stars. It is probably the best cupcake I've actually ever had in all of Walt Disney World. I'm going to try to cut it in half to give you an idea. There are these chocolate pearls on top and, and, the, and the cupcake itself is, is, um, is chocolate, but inside is this marshmallow toasted frosting. And oh, it's a red velvet uh, cupcake inside. And I don't know if you could check, but it's almost like, um, uh, yeah, you see the marshmallow and it's, there's a texture crunch to this um, cupcake inside. It is delicious. I'm not the kind of guy who's gonna show you food by eating it, but I have to show you this cupcake because it's the best winner here at Disney's Animal Kingdom, perhaps all of Walt Disney World. I've stepped away from my table for two reasons, partly to show you the beauty of Flame Tree Barbecue, their use of water, of ponds, of waterfalls, statuary, theming, decor. Um, it's a beautiful place to dine and, uh, and just enjoy the view, not only of uh, the restaurant itself, but of the lake that falls beyond it with um, Expedition Everest uh, far away in the background. The other reason I, I've stepped away from it, from the table, is because there is a capacity issue that Disney's dealing with. I mentioned that, uh, I mentioned that there is um, a challenge with having to put in your mobile order and then waiting up to an hour before you can even say that you're here and then wait another few minutes beyond that for your meal to be prepared and ready. Why? is it that this is happening? The reason is, and you could see it in the visuals I'm showing you right now, is that they're not able to use all the tables. There's no place for people to sit. There's not a long line of people picking up food. It's that once they pick up food, they need a place to actually enjoy and, uh, and eat it. And there is only so much when you're trying to do the social distancing challenge. So as a result, um, tables are kind of at a premium and they kind of backlog the guest experience while they're here and uh, makes it difficult. It's getting better at this hour, but I, I walked around the majority of this restaurant complex looking for a table and ended up in the back corner area to, uh, to have my meal. But that's kind of typical because, and I had the same experience the other day at uh, Pecos Bills. It was middle of the day and um, people were waiting 30 minutes, having put in their order an hour in advance. People who were then waiting another 30 minutes to say they are there. And then once they got their meal, they ended up, we ended up back in Tortugas Tavern in some inside area seating because there was no space in the actual Pecos Bill portion of the restaurant to eat. That's how crazy it is. That's the challenges that the park has and, uh, and all of it makes it look crowded, more crowded, but it doesn't increase capacity. And if you haven't gone through my recent podcast, Has Disney Increased Capacity? Bob Chapek said this week that it is remaining at 25% of capacity right now. Um, that podcast actually goes through Disney's Hollywood Studios and gives you a very good reason as to why they have capacity challenges creating uh, their guest experience in the parks. Well, as they say on the Jungle Cruise, we're here in the scariest part of our entire journey, the return to civilization. And fortunately for us, this entire new area at Disney's Animal Kingdom has been uh, widened up. Remember right here, in this area that I'm showing is where all that security used to be. That has all been pushed back uh, to those um, uh, areas that you see beyond and is given a lot more space for guests to come together and to, uh, and to uh, enter the park. Joffrey's is open and that's all good. But if you look over here at the outpost shop, it is one of those places that still has not uh, 
come back since the pandemic began. Um, but it is notwithstanding a beautiful park and a beautiful park entry that they've created uh, for guests. Uh, and an interesting entry because the parking lot trams have actually not uh, started operating in their new position since the park opened because uh, courtesy trams are not in, uh, in operation at this time. So uh, that means we're all gonna be walking a little bit. I won't, uh, I won't have you join me on that walk, but I do want you to know that we're glad that you joined us here at Disney's Animal Kingdom for this update. And uh, I hope you have a wild day of your own. Take care. And in the words of Sinbad's storybook voyage, Alan Menken's words, always follow the compass of your heart. Have a great day. We'll see you real soon.